A warm good afternoon, one and all present here. I am Rahina, student of NCDC 56th batch. Today, we, the NCDC 56th batch, showing pride the webinar on the topic of Be a Creator. Our faculty constantly striving to improve our quality of learning. This is the example of that. Today's webinar is example of that. Without wasting time, let's get started. For the auspicious beginning, I would like to welcome Smriti ma'am for the prayer. Thank you, Rehina ma'am. Lord bless me, Lord bless me, bless me always. I am your little baby, please protect me. You are my papa, you are my mama, you are my world as well. Pat me always, hug me always, with your invisible hand. I can see you in me rainbow, I can see you in vain. I can't touch you, but I feel you. Always am my heart. Lord bless me, Lord bless me, bless me always. I am your little baby. Please protect me. Please protect me. Thank you, Smriti ma'am. It was beautiful one and pleases the ears. Thank you. And then I would like to welcome Adria ma'am for the welcome speech. Welcome ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Rahina ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to you all. Thank you, Rahina ma'am, giving me such a wonderful responsibility. Before that, I would like to share about NCDC. NCDC is a self-governing national child welfare organization established to promote women and child welfare. Yes, I am moving to my duty. According to Mark Van Doren, the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery. By this beautiful card, I would like to welcome our resource person, Chief Guest, Mrs. Rajalakshmi Gigi, the principal of Sri Devishanga Vidya Mandir Kochi. Welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you. Next, I would like to welcome founder of One World, One Language, our pillar of NCDC, Mr. Baba Alexander Sir, welcoming you. Teaching is the profession that teaches all the other profession. Next, I happily welcome faculty and coordinator of this webinar, Mrs. Sheba PK, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. So much, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Last but not least, I heartily welcome our batchmates and participants to this beautiful webinar. Once again, welcome each and everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Adira, ma'am. It was a wonderful, marvelous welcome speech. And next, I'm to, I would like to welcome a person beyond the description, the pillar of NCDC 56th batch, none other than Arshiva, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am, for the presidential speech. Ma'am, unmute, ma'am, please. Yes, thank you so much, Rahina, ma'am. Good afternoon to all. Good afternoon, Rajalakshmi, ma'am. And uh, before that, as Adira, National Child Development Council is a self-governed organization which is working for the welfare of women and children. And today we have a free webinar for general public. And uh, it is our, we have a wonderful guest today, Rajalakshmi, ma'am to hear she is uh, spend she is a very busy person even though she is in her busy schedule she is here with us so welcome raja lakshmi ma'am yes ma'am over to you could you please make me the host so that i can share the yes ma'am allowed screen sharing you can share ma'am you can share
It is showing host disabled yes. participant screen. Ma'am, you can share, please check, ma'am. Can you share? Yes, yes, let me just. Yes. Yes, ma'am, it's sharing. Okay. Can you all see? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So a warm good afternoon to all of you. And uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity like this. Okay. Sure, ma'am. So today's topic is actually be a creator. Do you all want to be a creator just show me a thumbs up how many of you would like to be a creator yes very good okay all of us would like to be a creator now who can be a creator or how can we create a person who is happy one who is happy can only create because only what we have, we can give it to others. Now, for example, if we take a lemon and orange, what does it give? It, lemon gives lemon juice and an orange gives orange juice. It cannot give something else. So only what we have within us, we can share to others. We can spread around us. So one who is happy, can create beautifully. So as teachers, the most important thing is we should be happy. We have to find our own happiness to spread happiness and be beautiful creators. Now, all are creators, each and every individual is a creator. But what is the speciality of teachers? Now, as teachers, so many kids pass through our hands and we mold them. So an individual, every individual is a creator. Every parent is a creator, but they may be molding only two or three or maximum of five, uh, five kids. But as teachers, thousands of children are passing through our hands every year. So many children are passing through our hands. So we are actually creating their destiny, shaping their destiny, molding them. So that is the importance of a teacher. Now, as teachers, are we able to create beauty around us or beautifully? Now, we see a lot of challenges in the current scenario around us in the society. We see a lot of challenges. And we always, the general tendency of the mankind is to criticize about all these things or to find fault with all these things. But as teachers, as Adira mentioned, teachers are the creators of all the other professions. We create all, everybody else. So as creators, if we can create beautifully or if we create beauty around us, we are able to spread it in our society. So as a teacher, we should realize that we have the capacity to change the society. We are holding the, that res, we are holding that responsibility that whatever we are not agreeing, whatever is happening in the society right now, we have the capacity to change it. So when we mold the individuals, if we are able to create that beauty within each and every child passing through our hands, then definitely we can create a beautiful society, beautiful state, beautiful country, as well as beautiful nation. So everybody can become happy. So for that, as a teacher, individually, we have to become very happy, which is very, very important. So do you all want to be a beautiful creator? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Postman, yes, 100%, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, what are these? These are the... Ma'am, it's not open. 
for me i can see it on the screen you are not able to see no no ma'am no it was no, ma only the molding mines that file is seen no, right now no ma'am i can see it on my screen but yeah can you just send it to me ma'am okay okay just a second i'll stop sharing and then i'll uh, share it to you yes ma'am huh? yes she yes shiva i can send just message me your uh, email id ma'am oh, through whatsapp can you send them through it's whatsapp on my it's on my laptop <laughs> okay 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 shiba pk i'll send it to you ma'am i'll send it just a second i have forwarded Give forward, ma'am. Yes, I have sent it. Did you get it, ma'am? Yes. No present or catch on the curry.
It's taking time to download. Just a minute. How many of you are teachers in this? Are you all want to be or? Yes, ma'am. Want to be a teacher, ma'am. Want to be a teacher. Okay. What made you choose this profession? Ma'am, are you able to share? Uh, no, I didn't check since I had sent it to you. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. It's sharing, ma'am. Just... Are you sharing, ma'am? Ah, uh, no. If you want me to try, I can try. But if you can do it, then that's also fine. Yeah, I'm checking it, ma'am. Okay. Maybe because of the weather, yeah. the net, is, uh, net issue is there. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Are you able to see? Yes, yes. We are able to see the screen. Uh -huh. Actually, I have forwarded it in the WhatsApp. Yes, ma'am. Is it audible? Yes, yes. Can you speak? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can start now. Third slide. Will you be able to? This Next one? one. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. Now, we consume all these food items. Yes or no? Yes. yes. So yes, proteins, carbohydrates, all these things. And it helps our body to grow and remain healthy. healthy. To healthy. Retain. Yes. So we, when we consume all these food items to improve our health, what have we heard? There is a proverb which says, a healthy mind resides in a healthy body so this is what we have been hearing always so what was the importance given by all so we used to focus on the physical growth that is uh, to how to keep ourselves healthy 
So we uh, go for exercises and so many other things, a healthy diet and things like that. So always the focus was on a healthy body. But recent researches and recent studies have shown that with our mind, with our mind power, we can do anything. Yes or no? So even our body can be controlled. Next slide. Uh, so even with our with a powerful mind, we can have a very healthy body or we can do anything if we have a very healthy mind. So recent researches have shown that how important our mind power is. And have you noticed the mentally challenged or mentally ill people? Yes or no? Yes. 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 And suppose uh, in a situation where we have to control them is it possible for a normal being to control a mentally challenged or mentally ill people in a very uh, when they are uh, in a very violent situation have you noticed yeah. it yes ma'am yeah. yes ma'am very yes. powerful isn't yeah. it yes ma'am yeah. they are like us the normal human beings but ma'am the previous slide so they are like us normal human beings but at that point of time when they are mentally challenged where they forget their physical limitations they are able to be very very strong so that is the my power of our mind our mind is so powerful that it is having the unlimited potential but unfortunately all the focus was mainly on the physical health, physical health. Mind power. Ma'am, previous, yeah. previous Previous slide, ma'am. The fourth one with the brain. Yes. yes. Okay. Now look at these pictures. Like the what we put into our brain. That is all through our senses. All the sense organs, the touch, the taste, what we hear, what we see, what we smell all these goes into our brain yes or no and these yes. experiences create the thoughts within Hello. us Hello. yes or no yes, yes ma'am yes. Yes, ma what is put into now for example whatever we eat makes or uh, creates our body in the same manner yes, all these things whatever we put into our brain through these sense organs like it is a deposit and this deposit when we do it repeatedly that creates the thought in us do you want to speak sir yes or no yes ma'am yes ma'am next slide please okay so it is like the deposit we are continuously depositing into our brain and this becomes a recurring deposit next slide please now it is a recurring deposit because we started from the birth till our death it is a continuous deposit it is a recurring deposit so what happens next slide ma'am okay these recurring deposits gives a result yes or no yes, yes into something now for example if you are putting in fear continuously if you thought for example uh, many people are scared about dogs so mm -hmm. if you put on uh, if you keep on thinking that i am scared of dogs i am scared of dogs what are you growing in your mind so these recurring deposits grows in our mind or through what we put in next slide ma'am so it becomes a fixed deposit it becomes a fixed deposit in our life so throughout our life now suppose it is dog or if it is height or if it is water whatever yes. it is we become scared of that so especially as teachers we should be very careful what we are consuming through our sense organs as well as what we are putting into 
the kids too through our words through our actions through our touch all these things it is very very important what we give to our children next slide ma'am okay these are different types of seeds now for example a pomegranate seed banana uh, means apple seed or grape seed there are these are different types of seeds orange seeds so these seeds each and every seed is unique do you agree with me yes yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma for example when we uh, plant these seeds what does it grow the apple will become apple seed will become an apple tree a mango seed will become a mango tree so these are different varieties of seeds and these seeds grow into what they are now for example an apple seed contains an apple tree inside yes or no ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma so apple seed uh, seed Uh, contains the apple tree within when it is planted well when it is nurtured well with right amount of water uh, manure sunlight etc it grows into a beautiful apple tree and it gives us tasty apples okay. so like that each and every seed is unique and it gives us unique products if it is taken care of very well next next slide ma'am okay now let us compare this to a classroom situation okay in a classroom scenario we get different kinds of students yes or no yes 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 ma'am like different seeds we get different kinds of students but what do we do we put them into a box ma'am next slide please we all put them into a box that is a classroom scenario where they have a fixed curriculum and the expectation suppose there are 50 students in a class what is the expectation of a teacher all the 50 should be give uh, give the same result yes or no yes <laughs> yes yes really we focus that we put them into a box all different kinds of seeds or all different kinds of children we put them into a box where we build a wall around them restricting them with lot of constraints okay this is what is expected and generally it is academics and okay everybody should get this everybody should be able to speak well everybody able to write well they should score well so these are the expectations so but what are we having we are having 50 different seeds but expect same apple from all the 50 different seeds but is it possible yes it no. is not possible yes, yes. next slide ma'am okay now look if when we look at these images the first one is a very a little child yes. this was previous one ma'am yeah previous one shiva ma'am yes this one yes so uh, in these three stages if we look at we grow from the infant to the baby to the old and age who is very energetic here who will be the most energetic of all the three here with my own first infant stage the child the child is the most energetic so we all of us are born with so much of energy so much of talent so much of skills but what happens as and when we grow it increases or decreases decreases decreasing yeah. why now if we look at a one year old child they keep on asking questions yes yes or no yes, yes ma'am because they observe they are curious about things they want to experiment they want to experience now for example a toddler a small child suppose the child uh, sees a staircase automatically the child will run up what will the parent do no 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 you will fall so don't run yes will hold the child and if it is at home they will put a barricade so that the child doesn't try it out but once we turn our head 
the child will somehow try to climb the staircase. So we are born with so much of potential, energy, observation skill, curiosity, and the uh, kids, small kids, they ask us a team number of questions. Yes or no? Yes. So yes, this is actually, this is our nature. This is how we are born. But when we put them into the box, that is expecting the same result from everybody, they, this start decreasing. That is, they will stop observing. They will stop asking questions. And we tell that teen, by the time they become teenagers, we tell them, uh, you are not asking, you are not interacting, you are not saying anything. How come? Because the uh, KG student of a standard, second standard student, when they come up to high school level or plus two level, they stop asking the questions. Because we have been telling them, you keep quiet, you go there, you do this, you do that. So by yes. doing all sorts of these things, as teachers, as individuals, as parents, we curb their curiosity. Yes. So this is where, as teachers, we have to be very uh, careful that we have to inspire their curiosity. We have to make ensure that they ask questions. Keep on asking questions which will help them to learn on their own. Next slide, ma'am. Okay, now looking at this picture, any one of you, can you please comment what comes to your mind? Any one of you, looking at these pictures, what comes yes. to your mind? They are independently coming out and try to fly. Yes, very good. Anybody else? Okay, so yes. a beautiful butterfly. Yes. Yeah. Now, suppose we help, we want to help this uh, chick as well as the butterfly and try to remove the pupa or uh, break the pupa or break the egg. What will happen? Will they survive and live? No, ma'am. They will not no. survive. They will not survive. They will not be able to live. So the nature, it, it is the natural law is that always, as I told you, the apple tree is within the seed. In the same way, we have unlimited potential within us. Every child, every kid has got that. But in today's society, what we see is that as parents and teachers, we want to make everything easy for them. Yes or no? Yes. So yes. to make, to provide comfort and to make easy for them, we help them too much. And instead of inspiring the curiosity, helping them to learn on their own, we try to help them out. But this helping them out is actually spoiling their innate potential. So we have to light it to inspire more to be creators, to bring out what is there within them. Next slide, ma'am. Ma'am, next one. The one before this. This one? After this, yeah. the next one. Yes. Okay, so by trying to help them, we put on more and more load on their back. But at the same time, if we leave them free, they will be able to learn joyfully. So this is where as teachers, we have to understand that by leaving them free, they will be able to learn joyfully. They will be self learners. So this will be long lasting because what we do as of now, for one year, we fix a curriculum and we want everybody to achieve the same results. So instead of that, when it is self-learning and joyful learning, they will retain that with them forever in their lifetime. Next slide, ma'am. 
if you give a man a fish and just a second. If you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So this is what we have to do. We have to Okay, some range issues. And no, no, uh, my screen. Okay, so this is what we have to do. But unfortunately, as I told you, we, uh, parents and teachers give them more and more so that we don't teach them what they have to do. We don't ensure that they are skilled enough to face the challenges of life, uh, challenges of life as well as to live successfully. Next slide, ma'am. Okay, so if we look at this, we provide them with everything. When we help, we provide them with everything. That is, we teach them swimming, but what we do, we chain them. That is, so they, so they can't swim freely. So this, these are the challenges as teachers we are having especially as teachers and all these as, are applicable as individuals, as uh, parents too. So when we are sure that what is it that we want to create until unless we know what is it that we need to create, then it is very, we will not be able to create what we want until unless we are sure about what we want to create. So as teachers, what should be our focus while we are dealing with children? Next slide, ma'am. Okay, so this is the basis of foundation. That is when we are dealing with children, how a teacher should be to deal with children, to mold them as well as to be creators in our own life as well as when we are handling children. Now to mold, the first thing is what we have to understand is nurturing. Now we had different types of seeds yes. and we have different types of students in our classroom. So when we are having different types of students, is one approach or will one approach be helpful to deal with all kinds of students? Never. Never. So... We, when If we have to nurture 30 or 50 students in a class, we should have multiple approaches because each seed or each child is unique. And for each child, we have to find out what is within them. That is very, very important. That is, we should understand what is their strength. And that is what we should nurture. By nurturing that strength, we will be able to make them uh, beautiful individuals. Like we are able to grow a good apple tree, a good uh, orange tree or lemon tree like that. Because, for example, the climate or the weather in which the climate required for growing an apple, apple tree, for bearing apple fruits or the um, water it requires, the heat it requires, all these are different for seeds. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So in the same way, when the what is required is entirely different, that is what we need to provide to. That is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in a box, there are different kinds of students, but we provide the same thing to everyone, expecting the same result. But all of them are entirely different. And for all these entirely different students, we need to focus on finding out their strength and giving them what is required. That is by nurturing what is within each and every child. Now for that, for molding them by nurturing, what is it? That is generally if we look at the smaller kids, as I told earlier, 
they are very curious what is this what is that why is it so why is it not so they ask a lot of questions because they are very curious about it so we should instill we should encourage this curiosity instead of directly teaching them okay this is a b c d this is one two three we uh, or uh, we should make or uh, provide situations where they can think we should make them think only when we make them think they will become curious so for that the first thing is observation we should provide opportunities for observation now for example usually we take things to the class and show them this and teacher explains now instead of that suppose you are taking the students for a walk in the garden then you can ask the uh, children don't tell them uh, anything take them for a walk even we uh, needn't tell them um, observe this or observe that when we say observe this or that they may look only at that there are there may be many things which we might not have noticed they will come up with so suppose you take them around for a walk in a garden bring them back or uh, even outside you can interact with the students ask them what all did you see what all did you hear what they were doing what are the things so they will start observing so this when they start observing they will start even comparing okay why is it so why is it not so so which will help them to develop their curiosity and at the same time we are also giving them learning experience through experiences because they may see uh, short bushes they may see big trees they may see creepers climbers so they will understand it by experience there are differences and why is it difference what are the differences even so we should ask them after observation we should ask them to speak okay what have you seen what have you heard they may come out with lot of things which they have observed which we might not have observed or even thought of because kids are having very keen observation so this is how we should nurture them by giving them opportunity to observe instill their curiosity through experiences and then we should make them speak and then have a discussion about okay what all you saw the even at the kids level we can discuss okay i saw a butterfly i saw a bee i saw a, a fly like that they will come up with so many things so uh, even different topics actually the integration of topics also can be done by developing these uh, skills like observation curiosity now for example some leaf are dark green some are uh, light green so different shades you can teach now uh, about different uh, for example small big all different con concepts can be integrated without even the children knowing that they are uh, learning something so that becomes very joyful learning actually you have taken them out for a walk and now suppose there is water um, they can play in the water uh, and things like that so combine everything put together that is the learning should be joyful and they will not know now for example like a hydrogen balloon and normal balloon so when we play that uh, kids when we when they play with that the hydrogen balloon goes up whereas the normal balloon will come down so even the concepts uh, of the higher classes also can be taught with very very simple examples that is the learning becomes joyful and it is it becomes experiential and through observation and experimentation we can help them to think critically as well as develop the creativity so this is how a teacher should nurture the uh, skills develop the skills so that they become observant and curious curious and they can learn all these skills which will help them to live a successful and happy life too yes next slide ma'am so another important factor is that 
when we are developing the skills the most important things right now our education system mainly focuses on academics yes and what as teachers what do we say we keep complaining that we have to finish the portions we have to get the marks focus on all these things so unfortunately we have put ourselves in a box isn't it yes or no very true ma yes ma yes. Yes. yes so this who we ourselves have to come out of this box to change the current scenario or situation we can do it even in the present scenario in the present situation also we can change it because unfortunately when we focus on academics and the marks the greater part of the uh, holistic education is being forgotten so instead of that we when we focus on all these things and focus on nurturing then definitely what result we achieve in uh, for example for uh, to take a topic what result uh, what needs to be covered in two weeks maybe we can cover in three days time because we are making them self learners as i told earlier as teachers and as parents we want to make everything easy for them and with that thought we are burdening them instead of letting them free to be self learners and through joyful learning and when things happen in a joyful manner automatically they will be self learners and they we are equipping them that is we are teaching them how to fish not giving them a fish for food so when we are nurturing the children the most important factor is character building yes and in character building the most important thing is how to identify one's own emotions and how to balance it because this is one thing which is absent in our education system as of now and that is why even as teachers as i told in the beginning like uh, who can be a creator only a happy person can be a creator so first we need to be happy to give that happiness to spread that happiness around only then we can be beautiful creators for that we need to focus on character building with values now when we speak about values values needn't be taught separately as this uh, you should uh, follow this value all these things it should be taught from nature nature itself we can teach children lot of values now if we look at the uh, animal kingdom or the plant kingdom they follow certain rules natural ru law so when children start observing now for example if we take the example of a tree now tree gives shade to us it gives its fruits to us so many things it protects the soil for us so all this it is doing it is actually serving us yes or no yes yes so it is giving what we do what uh, the human being first thing is what we think or we ask is that what will i get so from what will i get we should change the kids to mold them into what can i give when all of us start thinking of what can i give what more can i give whether it is for the uh, family for the friends or the society for the state or the country, can i give so when we start thinking and molding them as givers instead of takers now we are just consumers Yes. we want to consume everything what will i get if i do this what will i get even the schools like parents are saying we pay the fee so we need to get this so everything is like consumption demand and supply instead of that we should mold them as givers i am ready to serve i am ready to give this forgetting so uh, forgetting what i will get 
So we have plenty of examples around us in the nature. Tree is the best example. So we should develop that attitude in children, giving and serving. So which can create a beautiful society for us. Uh, so all these values we can see around us in nature and these values by observation, when they learn and understand it on their own, they will automatically, their character building happens. So it is not by, okay, this story says, this is the moral value. This is what you should remember. You should be honest. It is not like that. That is, we should integrate all these things into, uh, that is by observation, they should imbibe these values. They should acquire these values, which will lead to their character formation. And one most important thing is that uh, generally, uh, India needs a lot of nationalist feeling of nationalism, that this is my nation, I should serve more, I should give more, because generally, there is a lot of brain drain from India, and the, everybody asks, okay, India is not giving this, India is not giving that, or in India, I'm not able to, so are we ready to give to our nation? So that is, that is the generation which we need. And for that, we are the change makers. Only we can make the change. And that change should begin from us. It should come from us. And another important uh, value which we have to develop or focus is gratitude. gratitude. We always ask, okay, uh, or say that I don't have this. But with what we have, what are we doing? Are we grateful for what we have? We always try to uh, try to find out, okay, I don't this have this. So if I get this, I will try to do this. No. Instead of that, actually, we should be grateful for if we have eight good things and two uh, non-good things, what do we do? We keep saying that, okay, I didn't, I don't have this. So I'm not able to do it. But the uh, eight good things what we are having, when we are grateful for that, then we will be able to do more as well as we will get more and more. So gratitude is another important factor, which is very, very important. Then attitude, it is like water. Attitude uh, should be like water. That is, water takes the shape of any container in which we pour into. So we should have a very open-minded attitude or approach. That is also very, very important, which we have to develop in our children. Then skill-based and focused. Uh, we, our aim should not be academics if we make them skilled. Now, for example, listening, LSRW. What we generally do is, we teach them alphabets, we want them to write first. Let them hear a lot, listening skill. That is, stories are the best method, stories. Now, as uh, kids, whatever stories you have heard, do you all remember many stories which you have heard? Yes. Yes. So stories at any age, whether you are 90 plus or 100, or whether you are one year old, all of us love to hear stories. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. We yes. do remember our granny saying lots of stories, right? Yes. yes. So we love these stories. So yes. stories is the best method. And if we look at the ancient India and the olden times, they used to pass all these verbally, orally through stories. There was no written records, but it passed on from generations to generations. And they remembered it very well because it was taught as stories. So storytelling is one of the beautiful techniques which as teachers we can use to teach them. So it will help to develop their listening skill. Now, what is the advantage? Now it is, uh, we are living in a digital media where technology is so much advanced and we depend on the technology. But when we, for example, what is the color of the parrot? What is Good. the color of the parrot? Good. Only Good. parents are there? No, no. Different colors, 
Okay. Yes, oh, different fine. colored parrot heads are there. But if we ask, the first color will be green. green. Yes or no? The yes. first color which we hear will be green. Why? Why is it so? Because oh, we, such are, a yeah. Yeah. No, we used to hearing, looking, saying, parrot is green. <laughs> yes, because always we have been shown a picture of a green parrot. Yes. Yes. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> yes. So, the moment anybody hears parrot, the color green comes to our mind because we have shown a picture of a green parrot. So, instead of that, if we, we tell the uh, kids without showing pictures, if we tell the kids these stories, it will help them to imagine. So, they can even make a blue parrot. If you are asked them to uh, color a parrot, they may even color a blue parrot instead of a green parrot. But when we show the picture initially of a green parrot, okay, all parrots are green. So that is the image which we carry in our mind because we focus only on one particular thing. So that is where we should uh, remember as teachers when we... Uh, give some image or uh, when we show them, especially today's digital media, uh, we, a lot of advancement is there. But if we are, we are using the digital media, we should include all these different kinds of parents, uh, different colors of parents and show them so that they should, at one go itself, they should be able to understand that there are lots of varieties. So uh, if you are asked, uh, what is the color of parrot? They may be able to say yellow, blue, green, red. So they should be able to say all that. So, but unfortunately, we have been focusing only on one particular aspect. We don't find out in detail. So that is where we need to, as teachers, we need to be observant. We should be up to date and we should help the children also to develop these skills in them. And stories help them to listen a lot, to think a lot, to imagine a lot, to develop their creativity. Story is a wonderful technique which can help to develop all these skills like listening, creativity, critical thinking. And uh, you can ask them from this story, you make your own story. Whatever uh, you have told, for example, you have told a story, tell them you make this uh, into a new story with the same characters, asking them to develop new stories. So they will come up, okay, now for the tortoise and the rabbit, without the same ending or with the same story, ask them to come up with a new story or give a new ending. So they will come up with beautiful creations because they are born with that skill. Nature has provided us that skill, but we reduce all that by the time they leave the school. So that is where we have to focus on skill. Then next is wisdom. Instead of knowledge, I have used wisdom here. The difference is the knowledge, for example, I know to swim. Okay. But when there is a uh, need, I'm not able to swim. Mm -hmm. So is there any use for the knowledge which I'm having? No. No. So we should be able, that is another challenge that currently the, our education system is facing. That is children, they know, but they don't know to apply it. That is when the application level or the hard questions or uh, the concept when we need to apply it in life, they are not able to do it. So it should not be the knowledge. It should We should provide them with the right wisdom. That is how to apply this in real life situations or real life scenarios. That is where we need to focus on. So if we focus on these aspects, definitely we can be wonderful creators. But to create... We should be aware of all these things and we should be well prepared to. 
So thank you very much for listening to me. If you have any questions, I would like to hear it. Or if you have anything to say, I would like to listen to that too. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was really wonderful the way yeah. you simplified to be a creator. No? It's very much important. Being the teacher as well as parent also, it is necessary yes. to understand our child. Yes, that is what is, uh, it is actually the need of the hour as teachers and as uh, parents. And um, those who are having young kids, you can apply this in your own life to be wonderful creators. And the words, what you said, actually, we no, we are not making children into a box. We are actually in a box and we want them to be in that same box. Yes. So being the upcoming teachers. Yes. I think uh, it is a wonderful class. Yeah. Feedback you can give, ma'am. Ma'am, I have a doubt, ma'am. Can I ask? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yesterday, I have gone through a video uh, which is saying that uh, the KG student having uh, good marks, that same student is not getting that much marking when he grows up. And the reason the person is saying that uh, the it is because of uneducated parents or uh, we are not city, we are not capable of uh, giving uh, the education to that uh, kid or that student or that child. So ma'am, is that fact is true? Some students, some children who don't have the parents is not uh, that much educated are uh, getting good marks and uh, they are uh, going in high levels. Uh, they are becoming uh, IPS, uh, IAS, doctor, everything. Their parents will not be that much educated. So what is the fact that, ma'am, I don't feel that video is, uh, that is just kidding or joking to the parents who are not educated. So what do you have to say? Because in between your words, I found that we are, make, we have to give our children that much freedom. So uh, I, I got this, uh, some link between uh, this uh, video and your words, ma'am. That is why I'm asking, ma'am. Yes. So I'm just confused because of that. Okay, most welcome. Now, uh, as I told in between, unfortunately, we are focusing on academics or marks. Now, whether the parent is educated or not. Okay, ed educated parents have advantages. Uh, if the parents are not educated, okay, the child may have an advantage over uh, an uneducated parent. But forget that aspect at, uh, completely because as teachers, as educators, we should be able to equip a child. Now, for example, if we are giving the right skill in uh, the classroom or in the school, then the child, uh, we are, uh, means I uh, always, I've been focusing on self learners. That is, we, are we should provide them the environment in which they can learn on their own. So uh, for that, we are just, facilitating. So in such cases, whether the parent is educated or uneducated, the child should be able to learn on their own with the support or with the environment which we are providing. So this is where we need the change in the current society. That is now everything is mark oriented. Now, for example, A, B, C, D, you are teaching A to Z, 1 to 100. The child will have to practice it at home, uh, like uh, rote learning. They have to write it 10 times and learn and things like that. If they are able to reproduce it, then the child will get good marks. And when the child goes uh, higher up in the class, when the child is not able to do that, that is where I told like knowledge and wisdom. That is knowledge is that you know this, but you are not able to do anything with that. Okay, when does it become wisdom? When you have a knife and you know to uh, use it properly, it becomes a good tool. So you are going to school, you have been taught ABCD, but you are not able to use it properly, where to use it, how to use it. We have not been able to provide it to them, that how to use it. So that is where we need to have the change in the teaching methodology. And regarding freedom, freedom in the sense that freedom to learn on their own, not by 
teaching them. That is uh, now, for example, you are putting so many, uh, means even the alphabets, okay. Uh, even, uh, for example, you are putting A, B, C, D, they are playing with the cards so many days. Suppose they are playing with the cards for so many days. Now, after a few days, you are writing uh, A on the board and telling them this is A. Automatically, the child will be able to identify because the child has been playing with the cards for so many days. Okay, the child will be able to identify this is A. Now, what are we doing? We write A on the board. We teach them, okay, this is A, this is A, this is A. We keep repeating. But here, the child is familiar with that alphabet already. And then you are telling them, okay, this is the alphabet A. So the child will automatically identify this is alphabet A. A. So in playway method, when we teach, and that is where I told joyful learning. So when they are able to learn, but, and they are doing it on their own, later only we are facilitating. Once they do it, that is, as I told you, like observation, let them observe, experience, and then ask them to speak. So that if we do that, as educators, if we do that, Definitely, whether the parents are educated or uneducated, we can make them good learners. And that is where our country needs the change. And as upcoming educators, you all should develop these things. And to be a good creator, the basic foundation is what we require, as we should know what we should do or what we should be to become a Creator. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Wonderful class. And I would like to welcome Amina, ma'am, for the feedback. Amina, ma'am, please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rahina, ma'am, for welcoming me. Good afternoon, everyone. This webinar was uh, really helpful for us, and we have got so many informations, useful uh, informations for us, and. Uh, Special thanks uh, for uh, our great speaker, Raja Lakshmi, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, this was one of the most enjoyable and informative webinar I have ever attended. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, ma'am, you have given so many informations and tips for us, for our uh, teaching career. It's really helpful, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. Thank you so much, ma'am. And because you are, so, we know that you are so busy in your day-to-day uh, -day life. You are busy. as a principal, you have lots of works. Even though in that busy schedule, you have taken a time to come and visit and uh, have a webinar on a wonderful topic that is very much, very much necessary. Those of all yes, watching it online. Yes, yes, Rahina, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Rahina, ma'am, is ready for the vote of thanks, ma'am. Shana, ma'am. Yes, thank you, Rahina, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. Gratitude paints little smiley faces on everything it touches. To speak gratitude, it is courteous and pleasant. To enact gratitude is generous and noble. But to live gratitude is to touch heaven. A very warm and graceful good evening to one and all present here. On behalf of 56th Batch, I would like to present the word of thanks. First of all, I would like to thank God Almighty who have given strength and courage to do everything well. We take this golden opportunity to thank the respected chief guest, Mrs. Rajalakshmi, ma'am, for attending this function in a busy schedule. We will cultivate the advice you gave us in real life. Thank you so much, ma'am. Next, I would like to thank, it's my pleasure to thank our faculty, Sheba, ma'am, always guiding us to a beautiful life. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, dear. Next, thank you. I thank all the fellow students, my buddies for arranging this function, uh, and also Sheba, ma'am, for bringing Rajlikshmi, ma'am, here. Thank you. Last but not least, I also thank all the participants for participating in this webinar and making it a grand success. Once again, I thank everyone. I'm very grateful for giving me this, uh, giving this opportunity. Be happy, be bright, be you, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you, much. Shana. It was a wonderful word of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Yes. Thank you very much. I hope 
uh, it will be helpful for you. Yes, I'm sure. 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 So everyone will try to be a creator instead of being a normal teacher, no? Yes, that is what, because uh, the future of the nation lies in our hands as teachers. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much from the bottom of the heart. Thank you so much.